is what we desire. Oh, yes. And by that same grace tonight, the Lord is going to visit every one of us mightily in the name of Jesus. By that grace of God, we have a nice time ahead of us tonight. As this subject is being addressed, the present day challenges, causes, and effect. That's the title we are going to address tonight. And the servant of God who is going to do justice to that is already available with us. If you want to clap, do it now. Thank you very much. Well, only the best is good for Jesus. As far as I'm concerned, as his servant, I reject that clapping. It is chlorotic. If you want to clap, clap and let us hear now. Amen. So the servant of God who is going to be used of God mightily to address us tonight is already here with us. He is accompanied by able men of God as well. One of the first people that accompany him is Deke Yolani Yolani who is uh, equally with us tonight as well as Pastor Olupumi Adenega is also equally here tonight. And all of them following this man of God. The man of God that is uh, going to be used of God is a friend of the gospel faith, uh, faith mission. It's uh, a dynamic servant of God. It's uh, a power-packed servant of God, filled with the Spirit of God, equipped for a modern time like this. And uh, he is here tonight to do justice to this title. Permit me tonight, as I introduce to you, this great man of God and his accompanying uh, brethren from the uh, men of his ministry uh, vision, even here, as the servant of God, Reverend Samson Ajitumabi, is going to walk with God tonight to bless us. Permit me to welcome Reverend Ajitumabi to the microphone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for the privilege to speak to you from this small pit. I want to thank the leadership of the Gospel Faith Mission for considering me to come. I consider myself not qualify except for grace and so it was good we sang the song on grace praise the lord um discipline enough to stay with time so i would not go beyond the time but i also sing a song do you know there is another fellowship in heaven how many know that? Are you willing to sing that song? Yes. Choir, can you help? Yes. Do you know the reason of the fellowship in heaven? I know. Okay, thank you. Now, friends, you may need to drop anything you are holding. You're going to clap to this song. I don't know why I'm singing it. As I sat there, the Lord put that song in my spirit. I know we used to sing it in the 70s, those days, when we were worshiping God. No drum, nothing. We will make music with our hands and dance to Him, waiting to be raptured. Are you ready tonight? Do you know there is another fellowship in heaven? I know there is another fellowship in heaven. Do you know there is another fellowship? 
out of my life. Take everything out of me, but don't take my name out of the book of life. That's the ultimate. It doesn't matter what people say about you. If you miss eternal rest, you miss it all. Lift up your hands if you can. And say, Father, you can do better, Father. You can do ten times better, Father. Help my heart. Help my heart. Help my heart. No matter the challenges of this time. Help my heart to make heaven. In the name of Jesus. Can you talk to God for a moment? Talk to Him. Let God help our hearts. Let God help our hearts. Oh Lord, help us. We desire eternal life. We desire eternal rest. Help our hearts, oh God. Help our hearts, O oh God, no matter the challenges of this hour. Help our hearts, O oh God. Beyond preaching, beyond singing, Lord, help us to have eternal rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear a Christian amen? Let me keep you standing as I read one verse of the scripture and we'll take off. Is that okay? Matthew 24, verse 15. Just verse 15. If you have your Bible, open quickly for that place. And we shall all read it standing. Matthew 24. Verse 15. Are you there, please? Are you there, please? Shall we all read with a clear and loud voice? One, two, go. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who so read it, let him understand. Can you read it to your neighbor next to you? Say, excuse me, sir. 
I want to read the word of God to you. Please listen to me as I read. So read to your neighbor now. Let's go. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of dissolution spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Lord, I ask for understanding this evening. As we have read this evening, give us understanding. Your word said, Who shall read it? Let him understand. Quicken our spirit tonight with quick understanding and cause our joy to be full. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. You may be seated. In Jesus' name we pray. Daniel gave some very detailed prophetic statements. Amen. Especially from chapter 2 of Daniel. When he began to give a picture of what I can call the present day challenges. But talking generally, he had come to interpret to the king the dream he never understood. And so he said to the king, Oh king, this is your dream. You have seen an image. And this image represents different kingdoms, different rulership, different influences. I said this kingdom had been until a little stone fell from heaven and smote the image and the kingdoms crumbled but something happened to the stone. The stone began to grow. Until it fills the whole earth. And the Bible says, until the kingdom of this earth becomes a kingdom of our Lord and Christ. So I'm very hopeful as a believer that no matter the present day challenges, the gospel will grow. It will fill the whole earth. Nations will bow to the gospel. But Daniel began to prophesy the kind of oppression and atrocities that were going to come. And so in Matthew, Jesus began to say, when you see some of those things Daniel prophesied, that kingdom will rise against kingdom. That nations will fight nations. When you see that thing beginning to happen, he says something very important. He says, Stand in your holy place. Did you see that in your Bible? Stand where? Talk to me, somebody. Stand where? So there's a place a man can stand. That it does not matter the crisis of the age, he will survive it. He will not make shipwreck of his faith. He will be strong at every season of life. If he stands, where? Where? If you're a Bible scholar, you will remember that nobody could confront John the Baptist. As long as he stood in his holy place of ministry, which was the wilderness of Judea. Is that true? Is that true? Military men came there, he confronted them with truth. Custom men came there, he confronted them with truth. King Herod came there, he confronted them before everybody. He said, Herod, you have not done correctly in taking your brother's wife and Herod could do nothing. Are you hearing me? 
Why couldn't he do anything? Because John was standing where? In his holy place. Until John went to the palace. Who had me? He left his holy place and went to the palace and the dancing of a little girl cost his life and ministry. When you miss your holy place, the wind of this present age is going to sweep you away. It does not matter how big your color is. Are you hearing me? But if you stand in your holy place, you will be able to look at people and say, you generation of vipers, who asked you to come to church today? And they will still come again. They will leave you because you have the word of eternal life. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 6, he says, all of you can go back now, make your choice. The multitude have gone. If you like to go, you can go also. And he said to him, no one to which I will go. For you have what? The word of eternal life. I have been preaching by the grace of God for 30 years. My eyes have seen some things. How many of you agree with that? My eyes have seen so many things. I've been involved in so many things. I have known the rising of a leader and the falling of a leader. And so I'm going to be sharing with you passionately and very fast so that we can touch it in a global sense some of this issue of where you choose to stand. Are you with me? I have my teaching in your book on page 44. So if you'd like to follow because I'm not read everything because of time, I will pick the most important and share them with you. Is that okay, sir? So for reason of introduction, we have seen several prophets and several renowned people in scriptures discuss the reality of the days we have found ourselves. We've seen the challenges. And interestingly, these challenges are not new. For example, the devil tempted Adam and Eve with the same principles of loss of the eye, loss of the flesh, and pride of life. Are you aware of that? He came to Jesus. Tempted Jesus with the same thing. Loss of the eye. Loss of the flesh. Pride of life. That's the three temptations of Jesus. Today is tempting us again with the same thing. Friends, the devil have no new strategy. They are only repackaged. We have what I said here. They are only what? The package. The devil is a missionary in his approaches. You know why? In missions, we teach people about contextualization of your message, packaging your message to be relevant to the audience you are sent to. And that's all the devil have done. Everything is doing.
with diverse challenges. Need will measure the political, security, economic, social, cultural, environment, climatic, educational, technology, family health challenges will encounter daily, I mean several others. These are the challenges of our world today. Causes of these challenges. We are living in the days, in the last days. This present world is winding up and the stage is being set up for the Antichrist to reign. Everything you see happening today, they are all a setup to control everybody. And science is going so fast. My wife and I, we were so amazed some few years past when Italy and they were to go to somewhere and we went there three times we didn't see a door. Three times no door. So we went back and said, excuse me, there's no way here. They said, no, there is a way. You confront the barrier. So we kept going, following instruction. As we came very close to the wall, the wall opened. I said, what? This is the door in the wall. And when we cross to the other side, it's a different world entirely. I said to myself, the devil is in a hurry. He's putting everything to attract. Have you read in your Bible how the devil took Jesus and showed him the beauty and the glory of the world that is still there till today? If you are not disciplined, if you are not committed, you will soon be swept away by the pleasure the world offers. There are pleasures on earth. Are you with me? So we have challenges of economy in this day. And do you know that is a systematic thing? That gradually the world system is crumbling every kind of economy of any nation. To bring us to a point of a quiet designed world government. Are you hearing me? Now that's the challenge of this present day. Do you know now in Nigeria, cashless society is being encouraged. Now the CBN governor is beginning to introduce that in Lagos and in different places. Do you know? Maybe I need to also tell you this. I do a little of traveling around the world preaching the gospel. We were to eat in a restaurant in Jamaica and we were told that we cannot eat in that restaurant except they put a mark on our hands. This is life. I'm telling you, it happened to me and my wife right there in Jamaica. Are you hearing me? So we entered the place. We were hungry. We needed to eat. But they said to us, Sir, you can buy in this restaurant except you got a mark. And it's a three-digit mark. So we've got issues here. We've got hunger in here. We've got a decision of a mark for food or a continual hunger for no mark. That's what this present day is going to offer you. So my wife shouted at the man and said, we preached the gospel of Jesus and we understood this mark. We will not take the mark. And then you know women, when they know Bible so well, they can cause trouble. Are you hearing me? The reason your wife is still very quiet around you is because you have not given her liberty to practice Bible. My wife began to talk to the management. Said, this is the design of Antichrist. And we are preaching against the Antichrist. We will not take the number. So when she began to raise sensitive statement, the man said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, please come and eat. 
come and eat without the number. So we sat and ate, and my wife prayed aloud, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to this food. We bless you, food. Are you hearing me? But that is the age we find ourselves. I didn't want to tell you all of scripture, scripture, scripture. Let me talk to you like John. The things our hands have touched. The things our eyes have seen. Are you with me? So we have crisis that is very political. Did you notice the several intervention of nations like America, like Europe, over the third world nations, and of course the South, the South South nations, the global South, they call it. South America, Brazil, and the likes. Every small fight, the big nation comes in as big brother. Is that correct? And you see them, they want to control you, control your economy, control everything, and make you do the things you don't want to do. I don't know if you noticed what happened in Nigeria a few months ago. I think that was last year. When there was this advocacy for gay marriage and to be licensed in the house and you saw all kinds of debates that was one of the best decisions of our house to vote against it but you know what United Kingdom said they will deny us support for not obeying the demand for same sex marriage why do they say that they want a control is that okay they want their belief system. If you have ever watched in England in the House of Commons, have you ever watched the House of Commons on television in England? You will notice a box on that table. I don't know if I've noticed a box on the table. There's a box on the table in the House of Commons. Can I tell you what is inside that box? It's the Bible. That is the foundation of Great Britain. The Bible was the guiding principle of the United Kingdom. So in the House of Common, what you have in that box is a Bible. But you know what? They don't refer to that Bible again. In fact, the Prince Charles said sometime they interviewed him. He says, I am no longer the defender of the faith. I am the defender of all faith. That's the pressure of this present day. Can the technical really be technical? So these are the causes. Because the Antichrist is being set in motion and is working on his government quietly. It is believed that Australia is one of the cleanest country on earth. I don't even know if you have read that documentary. Now they have a computer. Australia is a highly computerized nation. They have a computer that is called by the name The Beast. Who has heard this story before? Okay. That's the name of that computer. It has the highest memory on earth. But the name is The Beast. And the working number is 666. So is Bible prophecy true? Is the word of God true? So when you see this abomination happening, that Daniel talked about, what must you learn to do? Stand in where? Talk to me, somebody. Stand where? If you don't, your leg will sleep. Today, the government of our world is so anti-Christ. Are you aware of that? You can preach anything else, but not Christ. I was in the train sometime. As we go in the train, I was playing on my system a Christian worship song. And some other white people in the same coach with me called the official of the train 
to come and stop me from singing that Christian song. So you can't sing it. You can't sing it. But you know, you can sing other songs. You can sing Michael Jackson, no problem. You can sing Lady Gaga, no problem. But don't sing Jesus, yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Say, no, 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 we don't want that. Why? Because the enemy knows that. I don't know if you listened to the interview that happened recently from Iran ambassador who was in the U.S. before. He was interviewed. This is current affairs. Are you hearing me? He was interviewed about the pressure for democracy in Iran. And he said, Iran will never succumb to the pressure of the West to permit democracy. They asked him why. He said, because we know the day we allow democracy in Iran, Islam will crumble. For our people are tired of our leadership style. And the day we give a little relief, we will be disappointed that we will lose a lot of people. Live interview, not in a dream. Are you hearing me? But for me as a spiritual man, that was very instructive for me. Do you understand? That all the fight of Islam is a fear that if we give liberty, do you know even in Nigeria, Muslims cluster themselves to be sure that nobody's break through their ranks. Are you aware of that? But as the Lord liveth, the ranks shall be broken. I said the ranks shall be broken. I see in my spirit a mass conversion of Muslims. It's coming. And you better get ready for it. So every of this movement is a function of an arrangement for the Antichrist. That is the pressure of our day. Do you know it's now permitted that you can have a child without a husband? And if you have a child without a husband, the government of some country will be giving you salary for having a child without a father. What does that say to you? Are you seeing our present day challenges? Are they real challenges? Can you relate with them? Are you following me? That you as a young girl can have a baby, you can be pregnant and government will pay you money and pay the baby on one money until you deliver the baby. If your parents quarrel with you and send you out, government will give you a flat at no cost. So you see why some of our children face us and say there is nothing you can do with that. It's the present challenges of our day. We are raising wild children. The family institution is falling. The future of gospel fed mission is not all these old men seated here. Your days are almost gone. I need to tell you that truth. The future of gospel fed mission is in your youth ministry, in your children ministry. And the earlier you have a repackaged youth ministry, the better it is for this commission. Are you hearing me? Your youth don't want to sing hymns like you are singing. You are too old for what you are doing. You know from experiences that some of your children are leaving you. Yes or no? Why? You refuse to repackage. You keep doing ministry as it was in the beginning. Life without end. 
If you will capture this young one, sir, I'm not speaking for these old ones because you are comfortable with what you are doing. I mean, an old man like our deputy Gio, you cannot jump like I will jump. Is that correct, sir? If you don't believe me, we can try and run now. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Your children are looking for a repackaged gospel fed mission. Who have me here? A totally repackaged gospel fed mission. If gospel fed mission will survive the present day challenges. I don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying. It's not part of my notes. But I believe I have the Spirit of God. Don't throw in what I just said to you. Let various leadership groups sit on what I just said to you. If you do, you will back a new revival in gospel faith. If you ignore it, one face will begin getting old, will be burying them one after the other for old age, not for sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the season is going. And life is in season. Who we'll have me here? Life is in world. There was a season you were much younger than this. Is that true? You could run everywhere. This is the challenge of our day, the courses we are looking at. And so I have here, I see it to jump. I'm going to keep jumping. You can read the full one in the notes because I want to remain within time. So we find out that we have challenges of military and security upgrading. Did you notice that? For example, in every French-speaking country, in every French-speaking country, apart from France, you will see a France or a, a, a French military base in every French colonized country. Who have noticed what I just said here? Go to Benin Republic, go to Cote d'Ivoire, go to Togo, go to Central African Republic, any country colonized by French, you will see their military base in that country. Why? They control the economy of those countries till tomorrow. Did you hear me? That's the challenge of this present day. That if you send a letter to somebody in Benin Republic, your letter first go to Paris to be screened and then sent down to Benin Republic. How far is Benin Republic from here? Try what I'm saying tomorrow. Write a letter and post it to somebody in Benin Republic. Tell me when it came back, when you got your reply. So there's a lot of military upgrading. Are you hearing me? Wanting to hold different nations to ransom. You know how many years America said in Iraq? You know how many years America has been in Afghanistan? Now America, Germany, and Italy, they are saying to Nigeria, we can handle Boko Haram. Let us build our base here. It will be the greatest mistake of Jonathan. Because once they come, you have become another military slave to their military force. Are you hearing me? So these are the challenges of now. Military colonization, security compromise. We had our president crying for help, saying that I know my cabinet is compromised. That's why Boko Haram is making impact. I know that the security agents are compromised. It's a true statement. <coughs> this is a public meeting. It will be safe for me to tell you some, uh, some advantage information I have. But I tell you, Jonathan is not weak. He takes patience 
to deal with a madman. Are you hearing me? It takes what? There are some madmen in this country. And as Lord lives, they will be judged this year. Are you with me? So these are the challenges we have. We have the challenge of financial regulations. Most of you have ATM card. Is that true? It's a gradual introduction. You don't know. <laughs> The world now has gone far. There is a continent that uses a rice as a biodata. You know rice? It's called rice implants. This rice we eat. One rice. They will implant it inside there. You know, in family planets, what is there is a family implant that you can do for a woman. They will plant it in her body. Is that right? And that will control her system and she will not get pregnant. Are you aware of that? Okay, now beyond that, there is the science of rice biodata that a little rice, one grain of rice, they will implant it on your hand there or on your head there. So you don't need to open any door with any key. Once you have it on you, you just touch the door, the door opens. Your system is registered with every security agent around. So once you pass by the other, it gives you passage. If you come, you don't have it on you, you can't pass through. That's the challenge of now. You see why education plus ministry will give you advantage? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That's our challenge. Of this present age, how are you going to preach to such people if you don't even know what they are going through? Are you hearing me? If you don't know the state of the nations, how are you going to? That's why some of us who are preachers, we are still preaching as if we are preaching to a world of 1970 in 2012. So, if you never say, package what you preach. Preach the same truth. Is that okay? In a repackaged form. Does that make sense to anybody here? That's the way for revival. That's the way for growth. Well, I'm conscious of time. We've got legislative changes. Different nations, different laws. Can I tell you one day I ran into trouble? I was preaching in Brazil in 36 cities for one month. So it was very intensive for me. You got crusade here, you got teachings, you got crusade, you got teachings, leadership conference. Then I got to this particular city where there's a legislative law that you don't preach against lesbians and homosexuals. If you do, is life imprisonment. I didn't know. I was praying. And God said to me, Boy, this night I want to save lesbians and homosexuals. So when you preach, you preach. I tell them my word and bring them to repentance. And this night I was preaching in a stadium. Everywhere was packed full. As I began to preach, I made, I made a statement, statement that landed, landed me to trouble. trouble. I, I said, when men do things animals will not do, then you are lesser in intelligence than an animal. So have you seen animals of same sex sleeping together? You've seen chicken and hen, I mean, is it hen hen now? Having sex together, have you seen that? As stubborn as God is, have you seen God of the same sex having sex together? I said, when men practice what animals will be ashamed to do, you are lesser in intelligence than an animal. As soon as I finished saying that, 
I saw, I saw the, the police department, department drove into the stadium and the light of their car was doing like this and they were all driving in and because it's a stadium the PA system can reach two kilometers away then I saw some heavy men on bikes all these big, big bikes big bikes 12 drove into the stadium the organizers of the crusade quickly joined their hands and surrounded the the platform I was preaching and they were praying. I mean, they were interpreting in Portuguese. I was preaching in English. So I had no idea I was in trouble first. Until much later, I knew that this boy is finished here. When it was obvious, my life was on the line. The God who demanded me to preach opened my eyes. And, and I saw a woman in the crowd, in my spirit, not physically. I saw a woman in the crowd on crutches. I saw her giving me the crutches and running and walking. So I announced, I said, I can see my spirit. There's a woman here. You're on crutches, two crutches. Come out, God is making you to walk. Don't forget this time, police were coming. Is that okay? Those guys got guns on them and they were coming. And then this woman came out of the crowd on crutches and woke up to me. I said, come here, mom, come here, come here, come here. And she gave me the crutches, fell under the power of God, stood up and began to run. When that happened, when that happened, God said to me, Boy, make the altar call now. So I said, every lesbian in the house, every homosexual, come here to God will serve you now. The police came to the altar. Those boys on the bikes came to the altar. Several people came to the altar. And you were shouting, Jesus is Lord, forgive my sins, Lord, I'm sorry. But why did I share this with you? You see the pressure I went through to preach one gospel that is true. Is that okay? Why? Because of legislations, laws. Do you know in those days in Nigeria, you don't take permission to do crusade? Yes or no? But now, you must take police permit. You must take clinical permits. You must send a guarantee that there will be no trouble. Legislations. These are the present day challenges. There are different being legislated. Not just government, including churches. Our leaders are making some laws that is killing our freedom of service. You don't like that? Can I repeat myself? I'm talking of the leadership of the body of Christ globally. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking of gospel faith alone. That today we are making some laws, legislating some laws that will not give liberty of the Holy Spirit and liberty of service in the house of God. For example, I was preached in the church where I was told you cannot move from behind the pulpit. So all the time of my preaching, I must remain like this. And I will be reading my sermon. The Bible says, this is this. And it's a cathedral church, huge church. But for me, I will become all things to all men, if only to save some for Christ. Are you hearing me? So I agree, because I have to sign before I preach. I'm telling you the truth, this is God's house. I have to write an undertaking that number one, I must not speak in tongue. Number two, I must not move behind the pulpit. So I signed. Because Paul says we became all things to all men if we can save some. Are you hearing me? What was their understanding? Any man who is preaching, moving up and down like I'm doing is called spiritual arrogance. Now why are you moving? God is a mighty God. So I stood there and I preached. And they told me, don't go beyond 20 minutes sermon. I said, correct, sir. 
and I put 15 minutes, I drop the microphone. Then I said, okay, in fact, the man came up and said, this is a good, obedient man of God. I love you. You are very obedient. I love obedient people. And I was coming in the evening. So in the evening, the cathedral was full to capacity. People were outside. And they, they reminded me, I hope you remember, sir. I said, I do. I will not move behind the pulpit. I will not speak in talk. He said, very good. He said, like you did in the morning. If you do this evening the same way, we will always invite you. We love obedient people. Do you understand my situation? So I asked, how much time do I have this evening? He said, well, we gave you 20 minutes in the morning. You use 15. So this evening we are giving you 30 minutes. We believe you will use 25. I said, it's okay, sir. So I preached for 25 minutes. I stood on one spot. And I preached what they can relate with. I preached on true religion. Say, true religion is this. Helping the fatherless, helping the widows, helping this. As I was talking and explaining, we had a great shout in the audience, in the elders' council. The power of God had fallen upon them. They have been slain in the spirit of their chair. And they are all speaking in tongues. So, my host ran to me. He said, what is happening? I said, I don't know, sir. You see, I am not speaking in tongues. And I am not moving up and down. So let us watch them. While he was still talking with me, a set of the crowd were slain in the power of God. And it was off their seats. They were screaming, praying in tongues. Some of them manifesting. He said, it's a reverend. What's going on? I said, I don't know, sir. Do I know? I'm just speaking for him. And I'm not moving up and down. And I'm still within my time. So I don't know what is going on. Are you hearing me? So we need to challenge. Oh, my time is running out. I have to close so that they won't suck me. <laughs> Praise God. But are you getting anything? Are you sure? Now, let me jump to the cure so that um, the effects, rather, and we call this a discussion. Was the issue of divorce could be traced to what? Unforgiveness. Did you see that? That's part of the challenge of this present day. Divorce is getting cheaply popular now. Is that true? And we're back to the days of Moses. In Matthew chapter 19, they woke up to Moses and said, Moses, do we divorce? They woke up to Jesus, rather, and said to Jesus, Moses, permit us to divorce our wives for every offenses. Excuse me. Why would Moses permit them? Moses didn't have a correct family life. I'm shocking your theology now. Are you hearing me? If you don't believe me, go out of Exodus chapter 18. Moses didn't have a correct family life. Moses did ministry, forgot his wife, forgot his children. He took his father-in-law to bring his wife and children to him. And when the father-in-law brought the wife and children, he couldn't see the father-in-law for a whole day. And you know what he said? He said to the father-in-law, Oh, thank you, sir. You see, they have increased my time. Thank you. <laughs> now, you got a picture, but I won't use all of that. Okay. You know, I told you what happened in that church. <laughs> but I'm looking for us to pray together. Are you ready to pray? When you see this abomination, what are these abominations? Wrong legislation. Wrong political grouping. Wrong military intervention. When you see all of this abomination happening, he said, do what? Stand where? Don't ever forget that. Stand where? If you 
too, the enemy cannot harass you. The effect of this present day crisis is a liberty to say a woman who is married can do anything she likes, she can walk out of the marriage. Unfortunately, in Africa, we do not know that our friends in the Western world, they divorce as an act of business. Ha, who heard what I said here? The law in America, listen, I was preaching in America sometime, and one woman that are sitting in their house, the husband called me and said, Reverend, thank you for what you preached today in church. You know in this house, my wife used to beat me. But I'm very quiet and gentle because I know the law. Who understands what this man is saying? He knows what? The law. That if he beats the wife, the wife, if anything happens, out of for it, and it so I will divorce you, there is nothing you will do. Threatening to divorce. So when I sit in their house, I call them the wife. I said, I understood you want to divorce your husband. And the only channel you watch in your house is a divorce channel. Looking at the benefit of divorce, what to make out of divorce, and what of you. It's a business in the West. It is not a business in Nigeria. If you divorce your husband, now you lose. For Nigeria, you go lose. But in America, if you divorce your husband, the law protects you and your children more than it protects your husband. Are you hearing me? So they're going to ask your husband to pay so much for your upkeep and maintenance. So most of the women, check those who are divorcing. They are prominent pastor's wife. Are you aware of that? Prominent business wife. Prominent people whose husbands have made so much money. So when they file for divorce, they get the increase of that man. Why do men divorce in this present day? Absence of what? Forgiveness. So when they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, Moses allowed us to divorce our wives for everything they didn't do well. What do you say? Jesus said to them, in the beginning, it was not so. May your marriage be the marriage of the beginning. In the beginning, he made them male and female, not male and females. We understood what I just said now. Anybody with more than one wife is not a practitioner of the marriage of the beginning. Is a practitioner of the marriage of Genesis chapter 4. One man called Mr. Lamish. He was the first polygamist on earth. And why did he become a polygamy? He made some extra money. Money can make you misbehave if you are not dead to self. The standard fall in our churches today at times is because of the wealthy people in our churches. You didn't hear that. Let me repeat myself. The standard falling in our churches today is because of the influence of some wealthy people. They have access to the leadership. Most of us don't have access to the leadership. They can fly with our geo to America. And they can change the policy of the organization before they return. You don't like what I'm saying. I cannot repeat myself. There are some wealthy people who want to repackage the mandate of heaven over a mandate.
it because they feel it is not working to their favor. So, Pastor, I don't like the way you preach. Every time you come on the pulpit, you preach against me. You are driving people away. So, what then do we do? We should preach for sin. Instead of preaching against sin. So no, no, let's talk less about sin. Let's talk about them. Let's bless the people. So somebody here, you are going to build 30 story building in one month. Say man, if you catch it. You see, you almost said the amen. Because your mind is so programmed for a blessing service. When I was growing up as a young believer, sir, if you exaggerate, not lie, you just exaggerate. You know what I'm saying? You just exaggerate. You won't go home after service. You come and kneel down and say, "Oh God, oh God, what happened to me? If you come back, I cannot reign with you. Please, God, help me. I exaggerated." But today, beyond exaggeration, is what we do. We steal church money and pay tithe out of the church money we sold and we give testimony out of the church money we stole. Ha! Wicked men in the house. Today we stay in church, we dance together, we read the Bible. Yes! We got our wives at home, we're still pushing some little bit together around. Right in the same church. How do you feel when you stand behind the pulpit? And you are watching the little girl you are sleeping with. And you are preaching. Do you know there is another fellow? She will laugh as an echo. If Pata Pastor, this guy is going nowhere. of this crisis is that divorce has become cheap to a force. You see men treating their wives. I will divorce you and marry somebody else. The day you say that after today, you are less than a man. Who had my English? Real men don't threaten their wives. Are you hearing me? Real men defend their wives. Real men don't kill the confidence of their wives. Real men project their wives. Real men don't insult their wives. Real men don't beat their wives. Real men are correct Bible fathers. They sit with their children. They are friends to their children. They don't confuse their children. Some of you men, your home is guided with a lot of military law. So you boy, when I'm coming home, you must read it. He said, yes, sir. So you taught your child to be very deceptive. Once you are away, it's not playing. Once that is started, pa, 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 it carries his bow. Two times two, four. Two times two, forty-four. Two times two, eighty-eight. Two times two, one forty. Two times two, one thousand. And then you enter with your briefcase. Say, ah! Oh, my dad, keep reading, keep reading. You say, that's my boy, that's my boy. Two times two, two hundred. Two times, he did my egg and fail. You understand what I'm talking about here? Because you have made yourself a Jedi at all. You are not a friend to your child. That's the challenge today. That's why so many children are not close to their father. Is that true? You thought you know your child? You don't know your child. Because you are not close enough. Your child has taken another mother. As an idol, <coughs> you go home and ask your children, Hey, children, who is your idol in life? The answer will shock you. 
because you are not in the picture at all. You are not a father who has influenced a child correctly. They've had you shout and scream and do so many things. Real men don't expose their wives to his own people to insult. Did you hear me? If your people insult your wife at will, you have failed as a man. Hmm, I guess you don't like what I'm saying. Can I just repeat myself again? If you don't believe me, it's in your Bible. All I told you is in your Bible. It's in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2 and verse 3. That a man shall be a defense. Real men defend their homes. But here's the crisis of this day. Part of the effect is cheap divorce, parental breakdown. Can I shock you, friends? Have you read in your Bible? When the ten sons of Jacob returned home to show their father the clothes of Joseph. Before they came home, they agreed among themselves. We shall tell our father that what? Some beasts have attacked your choice son. Is this, can this be his clothes? That's what they said among themselves. Are you hearing me? Now I want to challenge you. Go back and read that story now. Is that okay? Genesis 37. You read it at your time. When they were showing the clothes to Jacob, they have not told Jacob what they agreed to tell him as why he died. Jacob said, some beasts have killed my son and now I will go to the grave in pain. Question number one. How did Jacob run his family that ten of his sons became beasts? Anybody hearing me here? Who heard what I just said here? Who are the beasts? The ten sons? How did Jacob as a father run his family that ten out of twelve sons became beasts in his hand? Friends, you will give account of your children. Did you hear me? Mothers, you will give a kind of your children. I guarantee you. Some of you allow the television, the cable network, to be growing your children instead of you growing them. May God help us. We all understand what I'm talking about. Anybody understand what I'm saying? You see, this is not... A shouting service now. Everybody is quiet. You know why? He that will come, will come. We must be prepared. Are you with me? Divorce. Because of what? Of forgiveness. And the same you who have divorced your wife or divorced your husband, every day you go to God, Lord, forgive me my sins. Do you? Do you? Do you? Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. But your wife is offended you, you can't forgive her. Your children are offended you, you can't forgive them. Your husband is offended you, you can't forgive your husband. Say, lie, lie, over my dead body. Then you will die soon. Because you are the one causing yourself to die. Are you with me? Let me run two more and see. Under discussion, that's where I am. Poverty could, could be traced to unequal distribution of wealth and greed, okay? Corruption and infrastructure decay could be traced to greed. Very important. 
indecent dressing and moral collapse could be traced to indulgence in pleasure. You need to see the dress of our children today. The way most of you mothers are dressed here today, you know your daughter won't dress that way. Is that true? Is that true? When we meet some of your daughters on the streets, we cannot relate it that they came from your house. Two of us. We can't say they came from you. So they look at us and say, is, ma is mommy's headache? Let her be dressing like 1914 woman. And have you had your children say to you, Dad, you don't understand? Have you had that kind of language before? You are saying something to your children, say, Dad, you don't understand. And they are asking the question, have I used my money to train what I don't understand? Anybody hearing me here? That your child is telling you, Mom, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't know what is, you don't know what is up now. <laughs> One day, I'm a father of four. I got two boys, two girls. One day, my son said to me, I said, Dad, please, stop mom from doing shopping for us. She doesn't know the kind of clothes we want to buy. We're grown-ups. Give us money. Let's go do the shopping we want to do for ourselves. So I told her, I said, let's understand what these children are saying. Give them money. Let them go and do shopping and bring it. And they were going, and I said to her, I said, boy, do you remember the value of this home? He said, yes, dad. I'm going to buy bearing the value of this home in mind. That is a blessing for me. At times, our, some of our other children go to buy things and they have no value of the home in their hearts when they are buying. Is that true? They buy things you cannot imagine. But what was it my son bought that he said we didn't understand? He bought one uh, sneaker they call Hila. You platform. Forgotten the name now. Canvas nail. High top. That's what they call it. High top. So he brought high top home. I said, look at you. You see, I didn't understand. Is it high? This one I didn't understand. This is called canvas. I understood that this is canvas. You have told me you want to buy canvas and buy the high yield canvas. No problem. You will just call it a new name. You call it high top. This is canvas. I think I was calling it a new name. Ah, what are you talking about? It's just the packaging. I said, now you know I understood. Are you with me? Part of the effect of this present day is materialism. Good to be traced of covetousness, boasting and pride, addiction and misuse of information technology. Today we live in the age of computers, is that right? iPad, that pad, all the pads. But do you know something? The whole world is inside that iPad you're holding. Is that true, sir? The whole world, the good, the bad, the ugly. The day you browse a pornographic site, that is the day you know the way your heart is working. That this heart is not correct. You know what this iPad and computers have done to us? They will never open to you a site you didn't punch. True or false? It's a way of gauging your hearts. Because it is in your power to click your password. Is that right? It's in your power to click what you want to search for. Is that correct? It's in your power to decide what you open. Is that correct? So when you open pornographic sites, 
is to tell you the way your heart is walking. I know you are far from the kingdom of God. Except you make it right tonight. When you click a very questionable site, some of you can't even be browsing when your wife comes around. You will quickly shut down. Ah, that is you know where is ah, don't worry. Oh, she was saying. Say, but if I'm praying, you need to worry. I want to start praying when you came. Let's pray. Oh God, Thou art a God. You are deceiving yourself. While you are singing that song, your heart is still watching pornography. True or false? How many of you are times you are praying you are somewhere else in your heart? That's the evil of our time. So what are these effects? I'm to close 8.30. I won't exceed 8.30. Is that okay? Increase lawlessness. Did you see that in your note? There's a lot of rebellion. People can't stay in one church for too long. Especially gifted people. Anybody hearing me here? When God is doing some little, little healing, little miracles, little things by yourself, before you know it because of the miracles and healing through your life, you say, well, I think God has called me too. Let me tell you one truth. Anyone who breaks a church to start his own church, that his own church will also be broken. There is a matter of time. In fact, it's not a prayer request. It's a law. If you break the heart of your leader, God will bring men that will break your heart. It's a law. Are you hearing me? Today we have seen a generation of people who are so impatient. Who cannot stay under authority. Listen, well, what am I going to start my own ministry? My ministry. My, what is called my ministry? What is called my ministry? Who pacifies ministry to a human being? Are you getting what I'm saying here? God gives ministry and employs men to serve in ministry. Ministry is not a personal property, it's a service station. Are you with me? It's a service station. Lawlessness in churches. Rebellion against leaders is the effect of these present day challenges. He says, Sit down and say, I cannot sit down. Who are you to tell me to sit down? We came to gospel faith at the same time. Is it because they promoted you faster? Because you are giving gifts to the GO, that's why your promotion was faster. You don't know, you know the story? What are you talking about? He said, I know my level. Who is giving level? Who lifts a man if God has not lifted him? If you lift yourself, you will still come down. If God lifts you, you will remain there. I said to people, don't strive for the next pose. You hear me? Don't strive for the next pose. Strive for the next level in God. Who have me here? Strive for what? You cannot gain God and be ignored by men. Who have me here? You cannot gain God and be ignored by men. If they like, let them push you as a great man, as an usher. If you gain God as an usher, you will cause a mighty revival to happen. And every attention will be coming to you at the ushering stand. Say, ah, excuse me, last time I tell you, last song, I hear you, my dad. Say, excuse me, please bless me. Don't fight for position. Fight to know God more. The more of God, the more ministry can be very exciting. Did you hear me? Ministry can be a lot of pain when you become a politician in church. Did you hear me? Ministry can become what? A lot of pain when you play church politics. Please play fellowship with God. 
more of him choir sang to us all the time more about Jesus that's the secret that's my life that's my secret I beg God every day there was a year I was fasting begging God because of one verse of the scripture and I fasted for 11 months out of one year each day fasting begging God oh God let me experience what I have read here let me explain what I have read here People didn't see you so much in circulation that time. So what happened to you? When I came out, I said I was busy. Securing God. And God said to me at the end of that time, He said, today the nations of the world are given to you. I can't tell you how many nations in the world I have been to. Preaching the gospel of Jesus, highly celebrated, more than the people in my own jaw celebrate me. Why? I gained God. Tell your neighbor, gain God. Say, gain God. Don't play church games. Talk to your neighbor, don't play church games. Gain God. If you are much with God, God will be much with you. Increase of false gospel. Is that true today? Is that true today? All right. A man can preach truth and digress a little. Is that possible? And put a little poison out of what I feel like a good preacher. Decrease in commitment to Christ. That's because the love of many shall was called the passion for the gospel will fail. I'm going to stop here to lead you to pray. Are you ready to pray? Stand with me. Hosanna Blessed be my rock Let the work of my salvation be exalted, O dead, O sad, O sad, O blessed be the Lord, let the work of my salvation be exalted, O Amen. May I have this request for all eyes closed, no movement, Nothing. Just say where you are. Close your eyes. As I preach the word of God to you tonight, if as I was preaching, God began to show you some things you have not done correctly, And your heart is crying to say, Lord, I'm ready to change. If that describes you, please raise up your hand now. There is mercy in the house. Thank God for these hands. Thank God for these hands. You're not raising it to the preacher. You're raising it to your Father, the Almighty. He knows what you do. He sees you behind the closed door. We just said to you, son, make it right. If you are not ashamed of raising your hand to your father, if you are not ashamed of making it right with your father, come to the altar now. If you are ashamed because people know you, you may stay back. But if you are not ashamed of making peace with God, you are not ashamed of making it right with God, come to the altar quickly. Come now. This is your father's invitation. No wise son says no to his father. As you come to the altar, begin to talk to God. And say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Talk to your father. He is your father. He likes to hear you. Talk to him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. I can see my life. 
I can see the wrong games I have played. I have seen how the challenges of this present world have almost destroyed me. I have seen the evil of pride in my heart. I have seen the evil of loss of the eye. I have seen the evil of loss of the flesh. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Wherever you are, please come. This is your father calling you. You know your life better. You know what you do outside church hours. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me, O oh God. Lord, have mercy on me. 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 Lord, I bow my knees with these great lives that have come to your altar. Have mercy on us, O God. Let the power of the enemy be broken. Every grip of loss, loss of the eye, loss of the flesh, pride of life, whichever way the enemy have deceived us, manipulate our minds to do that which is wrong. Today we ask for mercy. Today we ask for mercy. Have mercy on us, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Can I request you to please stand and remain standing? I've got three minutes to go. I want everybody now to lift up your hand. The Bible says, when you see the abomination, the forbidden thing Daniel prophesied about, are you hearing me? The thing Daniel said, this is the sign of the end. When you see this abomination happening, it says somewhere in the holy place. You're going to pray, Lord, everywhere I have moved out of where you place me. You get what I'm saying? I have moved out of the holy place. Make my life vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Today I will return to my holy place. Lift up your trust. Say, Father, you can do better. Father, in the name of Jesus, today I return. In the name of Jesus, can you pray to the Lord? Lord, I return today to my holy place. Everywhere I have made a mistake, everywhere I have run out of the holy place because I want to do it my own way. Today, oh God, I repent. I return to my holy place. In Jesus' name we pray. Hold somebody next to you. This is your last prayer. And then I will begin to pray for you. Just hold one person, not more than one person. Hold one person next to you. And repeat after me because you are going to be praying for that person. Repeat after me. Say, Father, you can do better. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this life. Visit this life, oh God. Every crisis of this present age, give victory to this life. In the name of Jesus, can you pray for your neighbor? Lift up your two hands as I pray with you. Father, thank you for tonight. We pray for gospel faith mission. Let a revival break up. Let a revival break up. In the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone in this conference. Lord, let there be a revival in our families. A revival in our businesses. A revival in our personal life. In the name of Jesus. Defend this commission, Lord. We pray for our general overseer. We pray for our deputy general overseer. And all the leadership team. Let there be great wisdom upon them in the name of Jesus. 
bless every member of this great ministry. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Your time is 8.30 now. My friends at the altar, please, can you give me three minutes? Is that okay, sir? I won't exceed it. I want to counsel you, sir. It's not sufficient to come to the altar, but it's honorable to make decisions. Every man is a product of the decisions he makes. Is that true? Make up your mind, take a decision, and say to yourself, I have decided. There's no turning back. I will not abuse the holy place any longer. I would rather grow my life in the holy place. Because every sign shows the end has come. And suddenly, rapture will happen. On that day, may you and 